Hello fellow orbiters, this is Unknown Orbiter here with you with my first ever tutorial video for Orbiter Sim. Um, this is the first tutorial video in my line of tutorial videos aimed at the brand new Orbiter. Um, these tutorial videos will assume very little to no um, prior experience with simulators or even anything with uh, orbital mechanics. So with that in mind, this first tutorial video is going to cover the uh, most basic of basic things, the actual launching and configuration of the simulator before even launching it. Um, so let's just start. Um, by this point, I assume that you have already downloaded and installed the uh, simulator. Um, you should be able to open the Orbiter Launchpad with the orbiter.exe file. When you open it, you will see something that looks like this. Now, um, I'm going to explain these tabs and what you can do with them. Um, this first tab that you're entered into is the Scenario tab. Within this tab, you will find all of the possible scenarios that you can um, load into the simulator. Um, these are either grouped by folders, or they can also be standalone in the uh, list itself. Um, if you are new to Orbiter, I strongly suggest that you make sure that all your scenario files are grouped and ordered according to folder because in many cases they can become disorganized and you'll um, become confused with which uh, scenario file goes with which scenario. So that being said, um, I have my own scenario file list um, well organized. I've got some basic uh, standalone scenario files for uh, beta projects I'm working on. Um, just You should always remember to keep your scenario files nice and organized in their own folders. Um, the next tab is the parameters tab. Now, this uh, tab contains all of the uh, more advanced um, settings for Orbiter, such as the complex flight model, the damage and failure simulation, limited fuel, the non-spherical gravity source, and gravity gradient torque. I suggest that if you are a brand new um, Orbiter, that you should enable the uh, complex flight model and uh, gravity gradient torque. If you really um, want to just jump right in without any handicaps, then I suggest enabling everything except for non-spherical gravity source. Um, enabling non-spherical gravity source um, causes major fluctuations in your um, orbits, and you will notice this when trying to attempt to dock to the ISS, because you'll notice your periapsis and apoapsis, which we will cover later, will begin to rotate around the planet, and this can really throw people off and create very confusing situations. So I just suggest that if you're going to uh, turn anything on, turn everything on except for non spherical gravity source. Um, the next little area is the stars area. Um, these values you should leave alone unless you have an issue with the way that your stars in your simulator look, but really there's nothing you can do with these that changes too much. Um, for instruments, I also suggest, suggest that you leave these values alone. Um, I had absolutely no issue with the uh, just simple given um, generic uh, values that are uh, already loaded into the simulator. And um, the window focus mode, the uh, focus follows mouse, um, you should definitely leave this enabled. The next tab is visual effects. Um, these uh, options are going to affect your frame rates or how smoothly the simulator runs. And the thing about Orbiter Sim is that your frame rates do actually affect the accuracy of the flight model and um, such elements as uh, calculations that are um, performed by the simulator to calculate various aspects of your orbit, etc. So you want to have a very decent frame rate going into the simulator. If you don't, you will experience possibly some um, very odd effects that you won't be able to explain because your frame rates are causing the um, equations not to be performed at their peak performance. Um, for my lower end laptop, you see here I've got some of the uh, basic uh, settings enabled. I have disabled cloud shadows and specular water reflection. Um, these two options really hurt frame rates for low-end computers 
and even Horizon Haze sometimes um, causes some frame rate issues, but I have not noticed any significant um, frame rate issues by uh, enabling that. These two values down here, end light uh, level and max resolution level, those two um, should be left alone. The max resolution level, however, will change as new and more improved um, and higher resolution textured files are released. What the max resolution level um, value uh, symbolizes is the maximum render level for the simulator of planetary textures. Um, right now, I believe that the highest level texture I have ever seen was a four level 14. That was for the uh, beta orbiter. So unless you're downloading one of these very, very, very high resolution um, la uh, textures for your planets or moons, I suggest you leave this alone. The uh, general effects, uh, unless you are running on a very, very low end system from some long lost age of the dinosaurs, I suggest that you leave these all on because they really do help with the uh, realism of the simulator and allow you to really immerse yourself um, into the simulation. The next tab is the modules. This is a very, very important tab. The modules are sort of add-ons and um, important uh, elements that you can have loaded into Orbiter to um, do things such as add new MFDs, to um, add new functionality to the simulator such as Orbiter Sound, um, enables you to edit scenarios on the fly, and um, you can do things such as load in speech recognition modules, um, different guidance MFDs, you can have um, different modules that um, record flight data, and uh, uh, modules that interface with your hardware, such as uh, joysticks, so you can re-bind uh, keys and uh, buttons multitude of different things and um, these modules can be accessed in the simulator which we will explain in the next tutorial. The next tab is the video tab. In this tab you will find your video settings. Um, from the drop down list you should choose your graphics card and then you should uh, select always enumerate devices. Um, this uh, gives you the largest range of uh, screen resolutions when you go into the uh, resolution um, drop-down list. I suggest you do full screen because in windowed mode the uh, frame rates do suffer. Um, experiment with your uh, screen resolution um, unless you already know the uh, screen resolution of your uh, actual computer screen then you can just experiment with each one of these until you find the one that um, gives you the best frame rate as well as gives you the best visual quality so you're sort of compensating between the two. Um, um, like I said unless you're on a really old computer I suggest you um, enable this to 32 for the color depth. Um, I have never an, uh, disabled the vertical sync because I've never had any issues with it so I suggest you do the same unless you feel like you want to experiment with it then go ahead. Um, the next tab is the joystick tab. Um, very self-explanatory. Select your joystick and all of this down here you shouldn't have to change and um, if you um, are having issues with your joystick then you might want to uh, experiment maybe with some of these but otherwise you should leave these all these settings the same as they are um, for default. The extra tab I strongly suggest unless you were very confident with your orbiter abilities to leave these alone. So pretty much if you were watching this video you should leave these alone. <laughs> uh, the final tab is very basic it's just the about tab so it gives you some credits, uh, contribution, disclaimer, all that fun stuff. So um, to launch a scenario, all you have to do is double click on it. You have your description down here, and you can enable this, which says Start Paused, which uh, of course starts the uh, scenario paused. Um, you have two more buttons. You can say Save Current, which will save the current state into a save file. And you can clear your Quick Save folder, which um, we'll explain Quick Saves in the next tutorial. So if there's any more questions, you can of course um, message me on my uh, form account, which is Unknown Orbiter. Thank you very much for watching this video. And um, please stay tuned for the next installment of this uh, tutorial lineup. Thank you.